two engines collided, they were steam engines, they collided, and the engine that was pulling this train went down into a ravine, both the engineer and the fireman got killed. The steam was coming in and, oh, it, was, yeah. and it killed all the people. There were 28 people that were in this car that died. Just throw yourself Just up. like jump up. How they do it and make the movie. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't know why you would ever run on a like jump on a movie train. That wouldn't be a thing for me because look. I feel like. Next to, oh. Like comes up to my head. <laughs> that wouldn't be, I would never be able to. Nope. I'd be bad to do it. These seats are really nice. Yeah, they've been redone by the prisoners of the state of Ohio. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Many years ago. Well, this car was built in 1936. You know, used on the nickel plate railroad. They're lettering. And, uh, do you know why they call it the Nickel Plate Railroad? No, no, I actually, I know okay. pretty much nothing. All right. The Van Swearen brothers, who built the Terminal Tower, bought the uh, Nickel Plate Railroad and they made it into what it is. And, uh, the reason why they call it the Nickel Plate is because the, the track was so shiny, it was shiny as a brand new nickel, and that meant it was very prosperous. Oh, that's so, cool. money. so that's why it got its name. So, uh, this car here is was known for a famous desk car. Um, back in 1942, it was the summer, um, they were traveling out of Buffalo towards Cleveland on the Whalen track, kind of like a side route, okay. not the main line, but it gets around, but it was going pretty good speed. The engineer was uh, about 20 minutes late, and back in the day they had what they called a the tickets you know at every station they have to the, grab the little yeah, spring like, on through the y bar and it gives them the uh, their orders and saying oh i'm 20 minutes late yeah. so the engineer says oh i've never been late in my life you know so he throttled it up because there was a section of a straight track that ran pretty straight and level okay so that means they can make up some speed and they didn't have signaling lights so there wasn't like any way of knowing that something was going on at the front Meanwhile, like about 25, 30 miles down the track, there was an engineer group that are switching and they were getting off the track and they said, oh, in 20 minutes the train's coming, you know. Yeah. So they were backing out of the way. And what happened is the train came around the corner, seen the other engine, the other engine was out on the track. The two engines collided, they were steam engines, they collided. And the engine that was pulling this train went down into a ravine, both the engineer and the fireman got killed. Uh, there were three other cars that were in front of this car, and they derailed them, but they were stood upright. This one stayed on the track, and it ended up right next to the steam engine. And the steam engine had a hole in the side because one of the pipes broke off. Okay. And it was blowing the pressure to hot steam into this car. And it was summertime, so the windows were open, and the steam was coming in. And, oh, it, was, yeah. and it killed all the people. There were 28 people that were in this car that died. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, 26 instantly, two the next day. So, so the car always has all kinds of weird stuff going on it. Uh, one of the main things that I've seen and over here, over the years, heard of, and occasionally you still hear. When you're sitting in this car and it's all nice and quiet and dark, and you sit and look at the woman's bathroom, which is over there. Okay. Uh, you can hear an apparition come out and scream, get out. Oh my gosh. So that always happens because she was the one who... Seen everybody, seen what was going on, and telling yeah. everybody to get out of the train. You oh, know, so it's so, basically like a warning that something's going on. Right, and then the other thing that we got with the little kid that was crying, and and they were using a machine, and it was broken glass and stuff like that, and and so one of those things. One time we had a group in here that was a you know good in understanding paranormals and yeah. stuff like that. Actually, we were able to communicate. So the big question we always ask is why all the visitors always, or people get scared when they're in the car. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of things happen when visitors are in here. Um, like if they have their hands out the window, the windows will slam down on them. Um, things like that. Uh, one time we had a person that um, 
we told the story about the accident and they started laughing and the window came right down next oh, to them while yeah. they were doing a train ride. We were actually doing yeah. a ride, you know, and the window slammed down on them. Hmm. Uh, so it scared the heck out of everybody. So the, I was asking, I said, well, how come, you know, you don't guys don't bother us? You yeah. know, I mean, you know, we're here all the time and, you know, all kinds of stuff goes on. Yeah, you know, but they never really, when I'm in this car or anything, I, they never bother me. And they, the one word that came back was restored. Oh, okay, restore yeah. Restore it. So that was their only like thing. Like they that appreciate got, everything that you've done. Right, to keep the car yeah. going, yeah. Um, I was working on it one time, now down at that end over there. And um, I asked one of the guys that was in the shop, and I said, hey, hand me the extension cord in here because we're going to do some work. We had a, a car all torn apart. <laughs> and as soon as I stuck my hand out the window to go grab the extension cord, all of a sudden the window just started like making a weird rattle, you know, and yeah. it started coming down. <laughs> I pulled my hand and just like, missed nope. it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so that was the only time because we were actually doing work. I guess yeah. they didn't like that we were disturbing the car. So, you know, but we were actually doing work on here. So, and then after a while, it became all nice and pretty again. So, everything yeah, it got really quiet, nice. you know. Yeah, this car was used for the movie The Natural. As a matter of fact, if you turn around and you look at that window on your side there, you see the window there um, towards your uh, right-hand side? That's where Robert referenced that in the movie The Natural. Oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. so, and he was also in the car, the Mount Baxter. So that was in there. Okay. So, so the, um, the car has uh, been used for tourist uh, railroads, and we leaked it out to a bunch of different railroads. Um, it goes out, it'll probably be going to Cincinnati next year and again. Oh, that's cool. You know, for runs and stuff like that. But with the lady, you know, she comes out and screams every once in a while. Um, and sometimes if you sit here, usually at a full moon, around the full moon, yeah. is the more active time. Um, when it's a new moon, we don't get anything in these cars. I mean, oh, they're yeah. dead as dead. I mean, I don't know why, but with the full moon, there's more activity than when there's no moon. Yeah. So, and when it's in the roundhouse, it's even more active than it is when it's sitting outside. Than when it's out here, yeah. Yeah, so that's kind of strange. So, something's going on with being inside the roundhouse that makes all these aberrations or whatever start activating or getting going. Yeah. Um, there's the banger, you know, that goes on in the roundhouse. You'll hear him bang three times. Um, one of our members died recently, and he had a real bad cough because he had lung cancer. Oh, yeah. And after he died... Uh, I found out, you know, when the funeral was, so I came into work on a Sunday evening to type out the email to send it out to all the members and, you know, and the, and the board members and all that. Yeah. And I could have sworn I hear him coughing down in the base, in the conference room where the class was. Oh, yeah. My office is upstairs, and I, I could hear him coughing, like, plain as day, like he yeah. was here. You know, I know he's already dead, you know, so stuff like that yeah. goes on. Um, we have a ghost here that likes to shift stuff around. In other words, I, you can leave this flashlight here. Yeah, I can turn around, right. come back, and it's not here, and then you won't find it for three days, and then you'll Oh, yeah, again. and then you'll find it somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a real big thing around yeah. here. And I blame all the volunteers for, for not putting tools away. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, that, that's one of the things that goes on here. Um, and I, like, I've, I've been interviewed a couple times, and all kinds of stuff happens when People interview me. I don't know why, but it does. So there's all kinds of unique experiences. Uh, we had a lot of different groups, and everybody found something. There was nobody yeah. that never walked away and said, "Oh, nothing happened." You know, okay. so yeah, it all depends on the time, you know, and how good you are <laughs> as far as countering yeah. them up. But it's a pretty unique experience. Yeah, here's the the lounge area. This is what was unique about the car was the lounge. Let me mess up my shade here. You can tell that this is like a first class car. Uh -huh. So this is so what's nice. unique about the car is it ended right here. Yeah. And they had a deck out in the back, you know, like the America does. And it would have been a railing and stuff like that. Well, in 1924, when you're traveling and you know, the train's going about 70 miles an hour, you got a steam engine in the front. And you stand out here in the back while the train's going, and it's kicking up all the dirt and dust and everything. 
and these people are first class, you know, oh, fancy yeah. dresses and hairdos. Walk outside, you look like you worked on the railroad, you know. So uh, Pullman says, oh, man, you know, 1930s, he says, ah, you know, it's a waste of space. I can get, you know, three more seats in here, make it a little more loud, uh, nicer. And he put windows in the back and a window in the door so you can look out on the track. Oh. And it became the first observation car. Oh, so that's what's unique. And it has subway lighting in here. That was a newer trend at that time, you know, to put that in. And when we powered the car up to the power car, which produces electricity for the, the heat works and all the lights and fans and everything. Works. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. So how, how old do you think this, this car is? This car is 1924. Okay. Yeah, it was built in 24. So in almost, Chicago. A, almost 100 years old. Almost a four more years to be 100 years old, yeah. So Robert Rufford really sat here in that chair talking to his uh, uh, business manager about his career. Oh. You know, in the beginning of the movie, yeah. yeah. Being a baseball, that's before he got, you know, shot and hurt and all that. Yeah. You know, in the movie, if you ever watch it. Um, there's a few editions of it out there where it has the steam engines in it a lot, our 4070 and our three cars that we had. And we had a coal car and it took uh, a month or something or six weeks for the filming. Oh, that's cool. To do it. it was up yeah. in Wayland, New York, exactly where the um, uh, 62 yeah. uh, accident was. They said it was really a car. The car was really strange up there, too. Oh, I bet, yeah. Yeah, yeah they said yeah, all yeah, kinds yeah. of weird stuff was going on. You know, people were just saying at nighttime they didn't even want to walk through the car, you know. Yeah. And, yeah, they feel ice cold air flowing through it and it's 90 degrees outside, you know, that kind of stuff. So, yeah, everything's original in this car. Yeah. So. You know, it looks really nice, and it surprises me because it's almost 100 years old. Mm -hmm. And when you think about it, a car that looks like this nice, you wouldn't think is like 100 years old. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't have thought that 100 years ago, they had all these nice fancy gadgets mm -hmm. with like the sinks and the yeah. little... Yeah, but that's the way it was, but, yeah. Yeah. So, during the tour, I felt like... I was going to throw up, like I felt like really nauseous. busy and like nauseous and I thought maybe, because they're working on the sewage thing, so it doesn't smell that good, so I thought maybe it was just because of that or like because of the way that I was standing, like I felt like I was going to pass out, so we sat outside and then we came back in and we're like setting stuff up and I just feel so sick again and I'm looking at the camera for the shots that are going down the hall, like the hall, and it just looks like it's moving, and I honestly don't know if I'm crazy. Like, did you see it move? Did it look like it was moving to you? If anything, my eyes are just playing tricks what was moving forward. I didn't see it, like, rocking it or anything. It looked like it like was you were rocking. Saying. Like, the, it looked like the train was in motion, and it was, like, bumping along down the tracks or whatever, but, like, I really feel... <coughs> oh, Amber, no!
Bad when you stand? Kind of? I don't know. It's just like, it comes in like waves. Like right now, I'm fine. But like, like four minutes ago, I was you like, not, pushing. not, not. Yeah. Good. Like I was pushing it. Now we're not really getting much of anything through this. Just sit. Um, so I have a few concerns, which y'all probably agree with me on. But um, so my primary concern is there's a lot of places around here. Mm -hmm. So what did he say? Four, four steel, steel plants. Yeah. So um, I don't know. They're like making energy or something. But there's four different ones. So we've got one right across the road. There's one big one all the way down there. What did he say? 36? Mm. I don't know. I don't he know. He said a large number, which we, you will see later. Yeah. So it's like surrounding us. Then on this side, you've got a major highway that's like an overpass mm -hmm. of where we're at. And then on this side, there's another plant. And like we were talking earlier, the vibrations... And we just went out there. There's this big, I don't know, dump truck or whatever that they're using. So Plus. I fear for the investigation, audio-wise, there's going to be a lot of contamination because it's pretty loud whenever you go outside. There's also a train yard that's currently active. Yeah, so we did hear a couple train whistles, things like that. That is not paranormal. We did hear that all, both on the tour and while we were sitting out there. So there is an active train track around here. They even said, I think they said that this one was active. Yeah, at like four in the morning. But, so I'm, audio wise, isn't really looking that great. I don't overly like that. That makes me really nervous that everything is so loud. I didn't know that it was going to be that loud. Had I known, I probably would have been a bit um, on the uh, side and I probably would have made a better plan. Um, also, we probably will not test SLS tonight, and there's a good reason for that. So, um, if you remember me telling you that the website had reviews on it, and the manufacturer flat out said that seats do sometimes show 
figures. So, since this is all seats, a train car full of seats, I am very skeptical about any figure that we catch in here because I don't want to false label something as paranormal. So, I will not be testing the SLS camera on the train cart tonight. So, you will not see that. Um, obviously, we'll have it in other investigations. We just won't have it in this one because I don't want to label something as paranormal when I know it's not. So, I don't want to be putting that out there. Um, also, like we said earlier, I was a little worried about the whole spirit box thing. Being here directly in Cleveland, and, you know, we passed so many big buildings and we were on such a big highway. Near um, an airport. Yeah. So, I was a little worried about all the frequencies. It did look really good, though, when we were using it. So It was promising earlier. It just died out. Yeah. So, I think we're going to do that again. But, like I said, all kind of we're kind of limited on what we can do equipment wise um i don't really want to set up my laser grid because there's nowhere like flat to put it i don't and i also would say i would be careful of anything like orbs or such going in the picture yeah it is extremely dusty. it was very very dusty in here like when so, you move you kick up dust yeah so, like, I'm not, you can't go off of visual orbs and such at the moment. We will probably take some pictures because I know that they were saying online that there was faces in the windows and such like that. So we will take some pictures, but I'm going to be very skeptical and analytical about what's on them. I As we always are about everything. Yeah. Though. So, um, but the reason I want to sit down and say something was because I don't want you guys to assume that we're not doing anything. It's not that we're just not going to go ahead and not test anything. It's, I'm seriously worried about contamination because of the fact that we're located in Cleveland and it's such a high populated area. Also, he did say we were surrounded by a fence. I am kind of worried that somebody's going to like break in. He did say it's very unlikely, but, um. He also said he had cameras, but just be like, yeah. the fact is just two of us. It'd be one thing if it was a giant team, but literally it's you and a camera person. Yeah. And I don't want, like, nobody sneaking up on us. Cause and we ain't fast. No. No, we're not. No. We're the opposite of fast. But I will throw it down. <laughs> <laughs> just to put that out there. But. It we, just, like, seems like we're not going to get a lot of yeah, I'm not evidence. expecting. I'm not expecting a whole lot out of this investigation. Um, I was very optimistic going into it. I think it's a very interesting um, concept and a very interesting location. It goes to show um, haunted, like, antiques or items, mm -hmm. how they can attach themselves to different things like that, like a train cart. So um, I definitely wanted to show you guys the history behind that because this is definitely one of the more um, unique unique locations. You're not going to see this at a lot of different places and I don't think a lot of people have done investigations here. So I definitely wanted to show that to you guys but I am stating a disclaimer that there probably won't be that much evidence. We're trying. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm trying. I just can't make promises. Also, I'm very tired because <laughs> I stayed up last night. But bad decision. Bad decision. <laughs> so... We shall see. Let's turn on the spirit box. I'm gonna go from there. Random thought I just had. I don't know why. It doesn't. It goes with what we're doing, but not really. What they say there's 16 spirits that haunt this car, but 26 people died. So why only 16? I don't know. You know what I mean, though. Like what like makes a spirit attached to a certain object per se instead of like instead yeah. Like what makes them want to stay in the place they died like tragically and painfully. I don't know because I think sometimes you have hauntings that, like, how do you explain this? Are, like, intelligent yeah. and intentional. Yeah. And I think this one is probably going to be more on the residual side. Yeah. So, so mm -hmm. I definitely don't think they're here because they want to be here. It's, I think yeah. that it was such a tragic thing that it definitely left its imprint and mm -hmm. it's still, like, happening in their time like it's if you just believe in the whole interesting that only 16 out of yeah. 26 are like stuck here and my co my question is how did they come up with the number 16 that's what my question is too because like when i was watching and doing my you know research for once in my life they're like there's 16 spirits that haunt here yeah and i was like why 16 okay wh where are we getting the number 16 that's what i was this? like and like they did not of course say yeah because you know, i'm guessing 
I'm guessing it was a spirit box session, and they were just like, 16! I'm guessing that my... So my guess. And I could always be wrong. I mean, the whole thing about the paranormal is that it's all theories. There's mm -hmm. a, like, we're just out here trying to prove the best that we can that there's stuff out there, so there's a lot of speculation. But if it is a residual type of energy, I would imagine that it's all going to be there. That's what not I would, just not, not one. Just, yeah. I don't think it's tied to a specific person. Mm -hmm. I think it's just tied to the event. event. Yes. And yes. anybody that was present in that time will but, make its appearance. Yes. And it will play out. That would like be my thought, did. but like when they said only a certain number, I was like, that makes that no could sense. Be, yeah, about, that's very you know? confusing. Yeah. Just, but I could just be thought. totally wrong. I don't know why it just popped in. No, it's okay. That's definitely something to talk about. Alright, so, I definitely don't feel sick anymore. I also want to document that. I don't feel sick at all. She was really bad. I really thought, I was gagging. Like, out, literally, like, yeah. I thought I was me recording her puking. Like, it was I bad. was, like, gagarina. <laughs> like, I really thought I was gonna, I told my boyfriend that I was gonna blow chunks. But I really thought that I was gonna throw up. Is that why we're not getting stuff is because we're only putting them? I keep getting, like, my own, like, clothes. Power on. I did say there was no. a couple cold spots. In yeah, like that's like the main thing. Now, I don't, I don't have like a thermal. But I don't have one, so I can't touch that. So I don't like overly say that. So my worry with the spirit box is that we're too close <laughs> to other radio stations because we're in Cleveland and there's probably so many that we're just catching all of that. And I know that just turn her off down or I will not go down. Is it even getting quiet? Oh, there it goes. It is, just a little bit. So, I know that everybody says that if you put it in reverse, you're not going to get any interference, and I will tell you that is totally not true. Don't listen to that. That makes literal no sense. We always have it in reverse, and it doesn't matter whether you're going in reverse or you're going forward, you're still going to pick up a radio station. Just like when you turn the dial. Yeah, like That's like saying if you turn it backwards, you're not going to get a radio station. Because you are. All this there is a helicopter flying above there us. There literally is a helicopter yeah. now. <laughs> so... All the spirit boxes is flipping through radio station no yeah. different than you do in your car. Regardless of whether you're going forward or you're going back, you're going to pick up stations. And there are no wires to cut to make the interference go out. That will just damage your spirit box. Yeah. So, I know everybody says that going in reverse makes it so that way you can't pick up interference from radio stations. And that's just plain not true. I've been on enough investigations to know myself. I use a spirit box at almost every location that we do and we yeah. always get interference. So, I'm definitely debunking that that is a myth. That is not true. So, you heard it here. <laughs> Amber, spill in that paranormal tea. Spill in the tea. So, with that being said, like I said, we're in Cleveland. I'm really worried about that interference coming through. A lot of our locations are kind of on the outskirts. I feel like Very we're not rural. really dead center. But it's more of like we're next really close. to it. Like you could literally see downtown yeah. Cleveland. So I am worried about that, but we shall keep trying.
Do you want to come sit next to me? not getting much and whatever we're getting like really isn't making sense so that kind of validifies is that a word yeah I, I think so okay so that just goes to show there you are get that word counted that the first spirit box session that we did where we had solid words coming through consistently for that little bit was probably more than likely paranormal. Yeah. That's why we use Spirit Box more than once. Um, that's why we test it because I want to see if there's a consistency to the amount of channels that are coming through or words that are being repeated. And as you can hear, there really isn't much coming through at all. And if it is, it's just little spurts. And that's most likely a radio yeah. station popping through real quick. I did hear music at one point. I did too. Yeah. So, any suggestions? I don't know. We've tried all of our hits. Yeah. We've tried EVP, we left equipment alone. I just feel like it's so hard to do, to lean one way. I can't, because if I get home and I can't hear Jack squat for EVPs because there's so much, I'm going to be frustrated. Yeah. It's like that's what I'm really worried about. Like when you get home, I don't think you're gonna be able to hear your EVPs yeah. unless A it's screaming or B right in your phone. Right. And very rarely does that, you know, happen. It's just so much sound pollution, it's hard to it's hard to say. Like I don't know if my phone is good quality to like pick that up. It might not pick it up. Yeah. But, like, for me, it's, like, it's very loud, and it's constant. Like, I can hear, mm -hmm. I can hear them. It's almost like they're doing construction. Like if Yeah, you it's like to, they're drilling or yeah. something. I don't know what it is, but, like, it's constant, has been the entire time we're here. Right. And then we've been hearing semis off the highway. There's an airport nearby, so there's helicopters and stuff. Planes, all yeah. the fun stuff. So. And, like, you can't do connect... This, that SLS because yeah. chairs. Because chairs. And we don't want to be like, oh yeah, it's paranormal when it's just like when between we know, two yeah. chairs. When or they specifically said. Especially yeah. with like the chairs being close like this, but like it could pick up two chairs and put it as a figure. It, so like yeah. I don't want to be put in. No, I don't want to be put that off. That low key ruins our reputation of trying to. And I mean, I think that really hurts the paranormal community because you watch TV shows. Yeah. And they use the SLS camera, but they don't tell you that. Yeah, they don't so give a disclaimer. They're very like misleading. Mm -hmm. And I never knew that, so I thought like this SLS was this great thing. Yeah, like was like tracking. And I was so yeah, and I was like, that's the first piece of equipment that I wanted. And I sat and read the comments from the manufacturer and the comments from all the reviews of the people who were buying it. And they just downgraded the SLS so much for me that it was almost not worth paying the money because it was very expensive to buy it. It's and like that's $500 why, yeah. and like you're not like... That's why I held off for so long buying it, or that would have been the first thing that I bought. Oh, yeah, because, like, yeah, I'm always watching, like, the ghost hunting yeah. shows. I was like, oh, my God, that'd be so cool. That'd be so cool, and I was and like, then, like, how, you know, you can't dispute that. Like, that's so And cool. then, like, you read it, and you're yeah. like, oh, my gosh, you have to take everything with this piece of equipment with a grain of salt. Yeah, and you read all of the reviews, and you read all the notes from the manufacturer, and it just blows my mind that they don't talk about that on TV shows. Like, I feel it like really makes me very disappointed that they're very misleading. Like, that's the same thing with the Ovulus. I thought the Ovulus oh my gosh, me too. was the greatest piece of paranormal equipment that you could ever get. Yes. And they stopped making the Ovulus because it's misleading. There is no connection that the words spitting out are coming from anywhere. They don't... Like, they could not explain the science behind that. And if you can't explain the science, then I look at it like, if you can't explain it to me, then like I don't. if you make this, you can't you explain can't, yeah. it. Like, what are you doing? Like, so it's basically just supposed to choose random words based on the energy around it, but how is it doing that? 
How is it detecting energy? Like, how is it detecting how is energy it, yeah. into words? Like, like, that makes no sense. And it's really cool. I know that there's a lot of TV shows that have that, but I was reading a lot of articles that a lot of the TV shows will just edit it so that way it looks a little bit better. Yeah, and, like, you can edit stuff so yeah. easy. Like, you could edit it so it's going into what's happening around you to make it, like, more understandable. Yeah. But for me, like, the fact that they stopped making it... That's, like, a solid... No that's no. a solid, like, I am I will not rely on a piece of equipment that they don't even back. Exactly. So that's why I don't have one, and that's why I will not be purchasing one. I mean, the only thing you can really, without, like, you know, can't disprove are EVPs. Because, yeah. like... You can't do that. Like, Spirit Box, you can say it's... You could say it's radio. Radio. Like, and then anything visual, you can say, oh, well... It was a car driving It's a shadow, by. or it's a headlights, or it's... Or, like, even orbs dust. and stuff. It's yeah. dust, or bugs. So, like, you can't... Like, the only yeah. thing you can't discredit are EVPs. Yeah, that's why I think I rely so heavily on EVPs, and that's why I enjoy them so well. Is because it's very clear that, like, us two are the only people that are ever on investigation. It's literally just two I do of us. not go with other people um, privately when we film for YouTube. Because I don't want other people contaminating our videos. I know that some people don't have the same experience that we do. And I don't want them... Not that they're going to ruin our videos, but I don't want them to have any influence in the way that the night goes exactly and the more people that you invite into your group the more susceptible you are to false labelings of paranormal and that's not what we're about so that's why i only have us two is because it's a lot easier that way people think we're crazy when we show up to investigate yeah. it's just two of us we get questioned a lot yes like where's the, like, rest of your, the two of where's the rest always. of your team always it's just us but I don't know. I just so feel it's, like, it's yeah. always the two of us. So any EVP that I ever put out there is completely literally. unexplainable to me, and that's why I show it to you guys. Is because it's literally just us two. Especially when you get those EVPs that are males. Like it's two women in this yeah. car. Like there's like, no one. We else. never have males with us. We never have other people. And if we did have other people, we would document that for you. The only time there's. Other people are for the interviews. Yeah. And for, like, the histories. Like, that's the only time yeah. there's three people. <sighs> I'm so tired. A nice little rant. I know. <laughs> I'm just ranting because, like... I feel like this was needed, if we're being honest. People get... I know. They get so excited and they're like, do this, do that, do that. And it's like... I view it a little bit differently and that's why I don't. Yeah. So. It's not because I'm not listening, it's because I'm trying to prevent certain things. Yeah, like, if there's a bunch of people here, your evidence gets tampered with, even if they don't mean to, like... Yeah. And then, like, you got a bunch of people who are yelling. People talking, so you have to go through more voices. Yeah, and then you have side conversations, you've got yep. people walking. We have that issue. Oh my gosh. We used to do a lot of public events before we started doing private events, because I wanted to make sure that we could actually drum up activity before we spent, in quite frankly... These investigations are very expensive. Yes, they are. And I didn't want to invest in the money if we couldn't get any activity. So that's why we were doing public investigations to get some. I would think it was experience. like knowledge, like yeah. knowledge of how to do it correctly, how to do it correctly, and how to get yield what results. We wanted. Yeah. And the thing is, so we've been on a lot of public events with other people, and we used to let people join us. Like we if we're on a public event, we will still do that. But. Um, they just be like, oh, can you, can we hang out? And that's fine. And you do that with them. And then they were either talking, having a side conversation, or they got up and walked mm -hmm. and they ruined your EVP. And it's not that they meant to, they just didn't know. So for me to just randomly start inviting people that could potentially hurt our evidence and that would contaminate our evidence. And that's why you don't see me inviting people. I also think we're both picky about evidence. I'm very, yeah. Like, we're very picky about things. Like, we will disprove before we credit. And, like, not a lot of people in the paranormal field will do that around yeah. us. People are so quick to just jump on that paranormal train. It's like the train we train. were hearing. <laughs> <laughs> train. Oh, but, like, the train whistles we were hearing, they would have been like, oh, wow, ghost yeah. train. Ghost train. <laughs> ghost train. But we are in Cleveland. Like, there, there are, are tra trains. active trains here. 
for he the, even said for that. the steel plant. Yeah. They're dumping their steel in there. So, and I don't like how people can be misleading. I don't like. We don't like that here. And it's not that they intentionally mean to do that. It's yeah. just it happens. They get excited. So. Excitement. Yay. Yay.